She was crying. I asked her what was the problem. She said they have killed the gunman. Good job. Nigeria is a place where people don't seem to have value for human life because there are so many places in the world where that incident cannot happen. Exactly 10 years ago, four students of the University of Port Harcourt were killed by an angry mob. Now, they had been wrongly accused of robbery, thousands worked, and many filmed as they were brutally murdered. This is the story of the Alu Four. Thousands watched and many filmed as they were brutally murdered. Okay, so some of you might not understand the accent. These kids were wrongly accused of robbery, and they were just a mob killed them in the street, and thousands watched and hundreds filmed it. 5 a.m., October 5th, 2012, four university students run into the local community patrol. At that time of the morning, suspicions arose, especially as there had been robberies in that area. Accused of being petty thieves, they are taken to a mock trial where they are found guilty. Okay, so what what really happened was they went, they went, a guy owed them some money and they went to, you know, just to get the money. It wasn't like a gang thing. It was just like, oh, we're going to go over to Peter's house and see if Peter's got that 20 bucks that you loaned him um, so we can go drink some beer or something, right? So they go over to the guy's house and the guy doesn't have the money, so he accuses them of being a thief. Because he knows that calling someone a thief, like in Africa, if if you're in a market and somebody calls you a thief, you might not leave that market a lot. Somebody says thief and points at you. Like you can kill somebody like that just by pointing at them and saying thief. Mock trial where they are found guilty immediately. Their punishment is handed out. They are stripped, beaten. You see what I'm saying? Immediately. That's what you're talking about, Fabian? Oh yeah, for sure. And that, yeah, this is, is exactly what I mentioned earlier. Everybody in that situation knows that, you know, how violence works, who is capable of it, who is susceptible to it, and they behave accordingly to the best of their ability. A lot of people still get killed and that's fine. Yeah. That's just, that's par for the course. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is how, this is, this is how, this would, in order for this to happen, this would have taken 30 years. Because let's just say um, you got a lot of noise going on in the background. Mute yourself right quick. Let's just say these guys got the death penalty in America. Between going to court, getting sentenced, put on death row, and actually getting hit with the lethal injection, you're talking about 30 years. For these guys, from the time that guy pointed at them and said thief in front of a bunch of people, they would dead within an hour they had gone to court and they were they had been yeah. adjudicated they were dead within an hour right and they expect that by nature as well as by nurture in other words they expect it not just because that's how the environment works but they expect it because the environment works that way because that's how their minds work and the guy who earlier in the story i think some of you was on here earlier when the story about the guy in the um in in the um army or in the air force who was trying to get it, um, axes banned from the dormitories, they're from here. And then as soon as they get here, they say, that's what I'm saying. Like, those people are from here. Those people that are trying to get axes banned from military dormitories because one person got killed by one, they're from here. So they've actually adopted the, the, the American ways very quickly. And they expect more from American society. That's why I was telling you, they would never ask for these, those, um, what do you call it? Those, um, they would never ask for those, for, for the rules to be, or laws to be pro prohibitions, yeah. Yeah, um, in, in their own country, because they know it, would, it just wouldn't even be, um, it wouldn't they you know they might get killed for that for asking um 
product of Cook County says pieces of ish doing ish things and will produce more pieces of ish. We pay less taxes and nothing of significance will be lost if gremlins were gone. Facts, facts. But this is an interesting story because this happens every day over there. 5 a.m. October 5th, 2012. Four university students run into the local community patrol. At that time of the morning, suspicions arose, especially as there had been robberies in that area. Accused of being petty thieves, they are taken to a mock trial where they are found guilty. Immediately, their punishment is handed out. They are stripped, beaten, and taken to a pit where what happens next is too horrific for words. But by the early morning, they were dead. What happened was they had, and this is something what they did, they were, they were beaten and they were, they had tires put around their bodies with um, gasoline and they were tortured until they set the gasoline on fire. So what happened was they take a tire and they put it around you and fill it with gasoline and then they torture you until you take the lighter and light it on fire. And all this is being watched by thousands of people and filmed by hundreds of people. Yeah, and I mean, this is this is a many centuries, if not millennia old tradition. It just manifests differently, you know, with the, with the influence of certain uh, European cultural artifacts. Invention. You know, the, the trappings the trappings are different, but the behavior is is the same over millennia. Yeah, this is this is um, Negroes and crowd. Negro Land. huh? There's no age limit on this crowd either. There's little kids watching this happen. Oh, oh absolutely. Well, this whoever's around watching. It. Yeah. Like this, this, this is not like um, this is not like the town square or the court building. This is like they were walk. They, they, the guy, the guy pointed to thief. The, the mob came. They brought him in front of some tribal elders. Yeah, they're thieves. They didn't have to have anything. See, these guys didn't have any. They didn't have anything that they'd stolen. They just said they were thieves. It wasn't like, well, what did they steal? No one asked. No one cared if they'd stolen anything. They never got caught. There was nothing that they had. It was not like an object that they said, aha, here we have it, the laptop or this, that you stole it. They just, the, the, they were called thieves. There had been some, some robberies going around there. Somebody said they was a thief. Brought them from the elders. The elders said, yeah, they're thieves. They were stripped, beaten to a pulp. Tires were full of gasoline were put around their necks. And then they were tortured until they themselves Decided that it couldn't take anymore, and lit them in 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 and set the um the um um the um thing on fire. They need colonization again. No, but this hold on, that is a deterrent. Could you do you think Kia boys would be running around doing what they were doing over there? No, but there's but there's a problem of you. But there's a problem of attack. Just basically executing a random person who just happened to have a Kia. All because of they don't all because they didn't think of checking evidence. Yeah, but here this is the thing. This is the weird. A lot of these processes are not conscious. Human populations regulate themselves as a a mass organism. The individuals within the society are like organs in in the organism, and they self regulate in terms of population, in terms of various variables, and this kind of thing is a way that African societies have always regulated their populations. The way that they do it, the particular character with which they do it, tells you something about the way that the brain specifically, the social brain has evolved. And it shows you how, the, you know, what kinds of differences are there between you, evolution of societies in Europe and evolution of societies in Africa. They're different, you know, psychological factors that can't don't enter into it. Yeah, like if we've decided that these guys are thieves, for whatever, right or wrong, right? 
the the prospect or the the the, the specter of housing them in a facility and feeding them and bathing them and clothing them and taking care of their basis needs for a set amount of years and then releasing them back into the public rehabilitated is a foreign concept. That is only something that you would probably see in the cities of Africa where the colonists left jails and we see that with the jails. The colon, the col, the colonists left prisons, the jails, the um, with a maximum capacity of four hundred, and now those jails have like eight thousand, ten thousand people. Yeah, there. there's there's remnants of European justice system yeah, type but stuff. If you're in a village or in the outskirts, where that stuff is not really applicable, this is the this is the, the this is the experience you have in the criminal justice system. I, Mossy, I pointed at you. You're a thief. You're telling them, what did I steal? Look, what did I steal? And the elders say, guilty. No, you've already, yeah, and you've already had a couple of bricks, but by the time you can make that complaint, you've already had a couple of bricks upside the head just by people standing around saying, oh, here we go. Here we go. It's, it's fun time. And that's why you say, like, the exuberance. When you see, yeah. like, big, big crowds of sun people in the yeah. U.S., just like mass them. violence, the exuberance of it. And I, I, this is what I was trying to say earlier, and it's it's just my maybe my pet hypothesis, but it's a rare you call it rare or uncommon, or it, it's an experience finally of having your brain chemistry regulated by the fact that you're carrying out an evolutionary imperative that you don't have control over. It's not conscious, but you you have this sense of that of that that um, that violent tendency, that violent impulse that doesn't fit in the cultural environment. And so instances where there's enough sun people around where manneristically everybody's calibrating to each other. Like the where... basketball game. Did you see the basketball game the other day with Shannon Sharp? No. Okay. Well, I, we, it's like, like I, I think what you're, what you're saying, we see, we've seen incidents of that a lot where once there's enough sun people around, they do, we, we do, um, we do relate to each other in the way that we relate to each other. Yeah, because you get a you get them. Everybody constantly has a sense of how people in general are going to respond to your various behaviors, just from little tiny, you know, millions of little nuanced manneristic signals that everybody's giving off. So, some people, on the whole, have a certain range of mannerisms that's different than the range that other groups have. So, if you get enough of one kind of person together that shares certain manneristic tendencies, then their their behavior is going to coalesce around uh, um, reiterating the, the the effects of those tendencies. Would you yeah. say and that's just a, that's would you say is it would you say is in the sun man's best interest to isolate himself? Well it depends on what it, it depends on what constitutes interest. Because the thing is like some like people not, just not, not, not getting necklace for for false accusations, for example. You you mean in Africa? Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Let's say let's say in Africa, for example, would it would it been would you think it would have benefit a sun man if he isolated himself from others? If this was if this was the fate that it, that could befall him? Okay. See, now this brings a, a, another dimension, which is what I particularly see in this presentation. I was going to bring it up. You're asking that question. That's a very glider mentality question yeah. because it's yeah. it, because it tells you something about how you define benefit you know like you you define benefit by living in a way that that is defined as good by terms that are very european in mentality but and that's contingent on that kind of mass effect like if you live your whole life around sun people who not only are physically sun people, but who are able to build a culture on the basis of their natural proclivities, then what you feel is beneficial to you is going to have a very different flavor than what you would feel as like the lone sun person in some like rural Swedish village somewhere. Yeah, Masi, there's no, if these people who live in this area, they're not like, Thinking about like fucking going off and fucking living in to or Tory Pines and shooting eighteen rounds of golf a day. These fuckers, 
They only have one fucking mode. They're born here. They're born into this. These people are born into this. Everybody they know lives here. They don't in, know anybody in fucking D, in fucking DC or fucking Los Angeles. Everybody they know lives here. And and the, they live their whole lives internally and externally in steeping in a kind of soup that includes violence as an ingredient to a certain degree. That's a different degree than a European situation. So it's not foreign to them. It's not, and this is the one thing I wanted to say about the presentation. When you started showing this presentation, the first and immediate thing that I noticed is that, okay, you know, okay, th these are Africans, they're speaking English. They're wearing, you know, a shirt with buttons and stuff as opposed to like, you know, whatever they might wear thousands of years ago in Nigeria. There's all of these European, th you know, the, the, the rooms that they're in, the camera, the, ca the camera. The camera. Yeah, the camera, the microphone, the <laughs> language, they're speaking English. But another thing that's going on is they're speaking a language, not only of, of European words, but of European values. So you look at the animation, right? With these guys, the four guys that are being accused and they, they animate them as being all worried and teary eyed and crying and scared. That's glider stuff. And the way that they say, you know, the, the, the words that they use to talk about it, you know, they're, they're falsely accused and it's unjust and they're acting indignant and a mob, an unruly mob. But if <laughs> for, for Nigerians in Nigeria, let's say, who are as Nigerian as you can possibly be with as little in, uh, European influence as possible, they're not thinking about this kind of thing in those kinds of terms. It's, un, it's an injustice. It's an unruly mob. This is all the language. This is all like glider mentality, MK Ultra trigger words, neurolinguistic stuff. You know, that they. It's almost, it's almost my bad to cut you off. It's almost like uh, what do they call the anthropomorphizing when they give human characteristics to animals. That's they right. give glider, they give glider characteristics to some people because this yeah. is for, this is, this material is, I don't want to say exploitive. This material is made to affect the heartstrings of a glider mentality, the words that they use, the way that it's animated. So it's, it's this glider African sort of hybrid that's going on. No doubt, like, it, it, and it's the same when you give sun, you know what I'm saying, attributes to a glider. It's the same thing. I mean, like, like I mean, it just doesn't fit. Like, we, they, we call them, we, we, you know what I'm saying, we, we make fun of, like, that, that, that glider that's, like, acting like a sun man or how a stereotypical sun man or, you know, what you would think yeah. about. Yeah, but I guess just to, I, the reason I was saying all that is just to answer the question, like, when you ask, would it be of benefit? Like, the people in that situation aren't thinking of benefit in the way that people in European societies think of what is beneficial. Because their whole life, the, their benefit is living with people around them that are like them in a society that resonates with their capacities and, and, and uh, proclivities. And that also happens to mean that there's a higher level of risk and violence and audacity and death around them. That's just, that's part of that situation. Yeah, so let me, let me just um, move along a little bit. Guilty, immediately, their punishment is handed out. They are stripped, beaten, and taken to a pit where what happens next is too horrific for words. But by the early morning, they were dead. I am Nduka Ojinmo, a BBC journalist from Port Harcourt. I know Alu community very well. Now, I remember when this happened. I was in Port Harcourt at the time, so I still remember it. It was the first mob killing in Nigeria to go viral. Now, when this happened, there was widespread outrage and debates about Nigeria's judicial system. People were actually there laughing, jeering, taking pictures of other people who were being slaughtered. But despite all that shock and anger, mob killings continue to happen in Nigeria. People like Ankyo Briggs feel that the government isn't doing enough to stop them. There have been 279 incidents of mob attacks 
since 2019 with at least five mob killings. To so listen, man, this is this is just how they, you know, what I'm saying this is how these people regulate this stuff, man. And and I think that it's it's we see it in the way at, we see it at black schools, we see oh, it at absolutely. black parties, we see it at black um, get-togethers, we see it. When, when, when there's too many black people in a certain section of the game at the arena, we see this, you know say we see this type of stuff. This is just how we relate to each other. It seems like if you don't if you don't raise your voice, uh, the right things will not uh, will not be done. And yes, there was uh, definitely a feeling in me that um, the system, the government, the judiciary, even the federal government, um, ought to be aware of what has happened in a place, in the so-called place of education. So, we have talked about the government. What about the people? What is it that drives them to such extremes? The failure of governance or failure of the criminal justice is one very potent reason for this because people are no longer interested in what happens there as a result of the failure of the criminal justice system. See, he, 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 you can tell he knows that. He, he does, what he's saying, is, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean anything. He, 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 yeah, it's just kicking the can down the road. It's just yeah. like you can... I don't yeah. even think he's doing that. I think he's just shooting the Willie Bobo. Now, this one right here, this one right here was... There's another one, the camera room. It, it just shows you, like, we operate at a different frequency. These women and children are being led to their deaths. The soldiers accuse them of belonging to the jihadist group Boko Haram. In the final scene of this video, too graphic to show here, they're blindfolded, forced to the ground, and shot at close range 22 times. One of the women still has the baby strapped to her back. Now, who would film that? 